All right, everybody. This is a little different, a little, uh, little fun. The world is going crazy, but this is D FTO Nerd Talk, and I got a very cool guest right now, uh, Maki Roll. How's it going, Maki? Hello. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm I'm very happy to have you here. I, I've seen your work uh, for a while now. Just been going through your whole Rolodex on Instagram. I've been checking out some articles you've had in the past. Is, do you? You've been doing this since like 2016, right? I've been, I've been. Oh, out 2006, here. sorry. <laughs> I've been out here for, for a minute. Um, I, I, I first started cosplaying actually in high school. Um, so yeah, in 2006, um, 16 year old Babby Maki, who <laughs> had created the anime club, um, was sitting in anime club, watching Akira, and we totally weren't supposed to be watching that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but our sponsor just didn't pay attention. So, <laughs> and- <laughs> They say, see what you can get away with. No, I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so um, there was a member and he, he became my like fake high school boyfriend, but he was oh, like, cute. do you know that there are places where nerds congregate called anime conventions and i'm just sitting there like there's a place where other nerds exist <laughs> um <laughs> and so uh i asked my mother well i looked online um with yield dial up i searched oh, wow, online going way back way back this is the way back time machine friend my word <laughs> um so i looked up conventions that were local to my area and there was Otakon but that wasn't happening I think that had already passed but there was a little tiny con in um in the heart of uh, Alexandria called Anime USA and it was it was really really small but I begged my mom to take me and um thankfully my mom my mom was a person who didn't understand the things that I did, but she she was very supportive for the most part That's with good. the thought that I would grow out of it. But no, when you encourage the thing, the thing grows. It it, it does do that at times, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you you not only grow and you progress also, like you've taken yeah. it to a whole different level. You've done modeling, you've done uh um I don't know exactly what I would call it. Is it is would you call it lose? Would you call it like a sexual involve work i'm not actually sure, like the, the break phrasing for the other things that you do so with what i do i i kind of um i like to say that i am at the intersection of sexuality and pop culture so that is that is what i have been doing for the past 10 years is i've just been kind of marrying those things and frankly, any way that I, I, I can, um, but, uh, specifically with, um, post COVID, I did a lot of, uh, nerd less shows, which are, um, exactly what they sound like. You put burlesque and nerd shit together and you get nerd less people stripping out of costumes, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And, um, I used to perform and produce a lot of shows and, I also, um, I did a lot of nude modeling. I used to do a lot of uh, lingerie modeling before I became the gremlin that is Maki. <laughs> um, I, I used to be an elegant lingerie lady. And um, through that, I just, I, I've always been a person who has, has been curious and fascinated by, by sex and sexuality. And um, so, through that, I was just like, you know, yeah, let's do all these things. Let's try to explore and see what I like and what I don't like and what sticks and what doesn't. I, I gotta ask, this is like you just said that, what what opened that door for you? What opened the door from, from doing like, you know, standard traditional lingerie uh, type work to going to this, uh, this, this sex nerd uh, type work? What, what, what crossed that boundary for you? Um, so 
I like the term sex nerd. I think that's just going to be <laughs> my my bio on Twitter. <laughs> you use it. It's all yours. <laughs> sex nerd and nothing else. <laughs> my pronouns and sex nerd. <laughs> um, but uh, I think, like I said, I had been doing Nerdlesque a lot, which was essentially me on stage for... 50 something people stripping down to um, song and pasties most times. And for me, I think it was kind of just like a natural kind of thing, progression, um, where it's, it's if I'm doing this and I could get paid for doing this, and I really like the attention that this gives me. But it's good attention too. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, sometimes it's, sometimes it's, not so good but um I so with that I, I I just decided why why not and my very first nude shoot that I ever did that was kind of a crossover of um kind of like lewd and nude and cosplay was um a Catwoman milk bath shoot. I've seen that yeah, yeah. you're uh you're you're belly down inside of a tub of milk and you have the domino mask on with the ears right Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I like um, it. I like it a lot. It's, it's very Earth to Kit, like because of yeah. the mask and like and uh, the ears and like uh, the, the way like you have like that elegance to it. It's very, it's very Earth to Kit. I don't mean That's to say that. That's what I was like, going for. Good. I was hoping like it wasn't, I wasn't saying it's like simply because you are a Black and so Earth to Kit, but like it definitely has an Earth to Kit no. vibe to it. Look, if I can be compared to Earth to Kit in any way at all, <laughs> I will take that. Good. Um, I'm glad. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so that was my very first shoot. And then um, through that, I got into um, rope play and bondage through um, literally a strong man. So a strong man in a burlesque sideshow show. And um, so it was just happenstance, like how does this happen? Um, so, yes. He, in, wow. a, in a way, I had always been kind of curious about kink and BDSM, um, but my exposure to it had been very, like, there wasn't a lot there. There wasn't a lot of, like, context to it. Um, I basically read a lot of Zane novels, and um, I went from there. So... You educated yourself. So, like, essentially, you, you created a culture that you cultivate for yourself, is what you're trying to tell me. I, you know, I'm going to own that and say, yeah, I, I, there are certainly people who had, you know, the concept of doing lewds and the concept of looting cosplay, um, that was, you know, not a, a new concept, um, and, and especially with Black Femmes, you have right. to big up K-Bear, um, because she definitely kind of elevated that and, and kind of, gave presence and let a lot of um folks know that you could do something like that um and so for me again i'm my brain is ever turning like how do i smush these things together and like make them work for me and so through that i started doing uh rope cosplay rope um just really, really like marrying all of my passions and, and loves and fandoms together. And like, you see that, like, uh, of course, I don't know you personally, but like the work that I see you do, you go from like uh, seductive nuns to succubies to coat enthusiasts and even wrapping around towards Sin City nostalgia. Like you, you, you go like a roundabout way, like kind of like a merry-go-round when it comes to the work you do, you even go like hardcore nerdy when it comes to the trends and culture that people are doing right now. Like you, you put your fingers and toes into all different elements when it comes to this, this element that you're making. And you're right about K-Bear. She does like, she does a whole cosplay Lou thing. And like some would say she even like uh, perpetuated to the point that it is aside from like, like, I guess Negri also, but, uh, but what you're doing isn't very similar to things like that. And like, from what I've seen, you have like the most followership on your Twitter and and Instagram doing what you're doing. And I see a lot more people uh, taking inspiration from you. Like, is that is that starting like, to affect you in any way? Are you still like doing your own thing or like you switching it up a little bit when it comes like, um, to the work you do? Um, 
I've had I've had complicated feelings with um these kind of things in the past and it's definitely been a thing that I've had to I've had to think a lot about I've had to um I've had to do a lot of therapy to really like bring myself to a place where um I I don't feel as though you know people necessarily doing or or taking inspiration from me um means that it will slow my progression um and it never has um but you're on the internet and you're on you're exposed to everyone all the time and you're also exposed to um, the people who have more numbers than you, the people who have less numbers than you. And, you know, it becomes a thing of like, are people here to be my friend or are they here for clout? Or, you know, am I crazy? Do I come off as somebody who's looking for clout? So it's, it's definitely something that I've had to work with myself to bring myself to a point where I'm just going to do what I'm going to do regardless. And I'm not going to let anybody slow me down. And when I see, you know, Black Fems who are getting into rope and, and doing all of this stuff, it's it's so cool. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think it's really, really cool. I, I get what you're saying. It's that uh, uh, genuine effect. Like, are you really genuine? Or are you just doing it for numbers? Are you really in this? Or are you just trying to get money inside your pocket? Like, it's a, it's a constant struggle and battle with, like, your morality, your structure, your ideologues. It's, it's putting all that in, in different arrays. And you are trying to find yourself at the same time because you're constantly changing. I, I completely understand that. Yeah. Uh, when saying all that, and looking at your work, is there is there any any pieces that really stand out to you of yours? I know, like you said previously in other interviews, that Storm is one of your top favorite cosplays of all time. I I I, I understand, respect, and love that. But like, is there any is there any pieces that you've done that that resonate with you that you say like I will forever come back to this piece? If someone like asked me for something of mine that I love so much, this is what I'll show them. Like, is there any piece that speaks out to you like that? Yes, Senketsu Fashion Week. Um, Senketsu Fashion Week was, um, if, you've, if you've seen Kill la Kill, it is um, Ryuko Matoi, she's the main character. It's her final form um in the in the show and the show is completely nonsensical but the main concept of the show is that it literally in order to be free and harness your true power you need to get naked um and so with this <laughs> character uh she I, I i started doing her um as a group, I was a part of a group, a predominantly white group, and they had all picked their characters. And so Senketsu Fashion Week, which was the hardest costume because there are these giant eyes that come out of the, and they're, they're huge. They're like my wingspan, giant foam eyes that come out of my costume, um, which are attached to essentially nothing. Um, literally a like strips of fabric and like a little like modesty thong and some thigh highs um and that is in katsu fashion week and a bunch of bells and whistles along the way was, was this um, your first time was this your first time doing this um a costume of that caliber yeah uh yes um, I had before attempted armor with my um, needly um, armor that I did from League of Legends, but this was kind of like my first time where I was really fusing um, constructed work with with fabric, but also so little fabric. Um, so really constructing how to affix those wings and and figuring out the mechanics of, of like 
dip dyeing my own fabric and also working with my husband um, who fabricated the foam eyes. He's a big that, part of what you do, isn't he? Yes, That's yes, 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 yes. I'm, um, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, so um, it was just really a project that for me, I felt was very strong. It was something that I was extremely passionate about. Um, when I was at the conventions, you know, it was, I couldn't move. And, you know, that was a, that was a really cool feeling to have that feeling of, you know, oh, can I get your picture? Can I get your picture? Like, <laughs> um, but also not as cool um, to have wardrobe misfunction, malfunction. Yeah, in, in, in a grand setting too, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it, it had to have been very exposing for you. Like, was this, was this before or after you started like doing more role play and loots? It was like, in the transitional phase. Ooh, so like you got some so, growth from this. Yeah, so it was like, it was definitely my, cause I had done um, skimpier costumes before. Um, I've all, I'll, you will always see me with my midriff out, no matter what, in a costume. <laughs> um, it's just, it just- it's who it, you are, I guess, yeah. Yes, right um, but it was my first time definitely wearing something where you know it's just a thong my butt cheeks are out um i don't know you know you have the convention staff coming up to you um you know asking you know are you like did you get this costume checked did you get this costume checked like is this costume con safe con friendly um because so they were worried about they worry about wardrobe malfunctions, I'm guessing, is why they kept asking. Wardrobe me. malfunctions, children being at the convention. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, but luckily, I had a friend on staff who gave me a check right away. That's so, good. That's good. <laughs> um, but Pushing those boundaries, that's cool, though. Like, I like that. Like, you're, you're, <laughs> you're normalizing this for a lot of people. And a lot of people think a lot like you do. They have that mindset. I, I uh, personally, with the FTO account, it's also a business account. I follow a lot of people who also are sex workers, who also are lewd cosplayers. And, like, you know, for them, it's not, it's not an easy go um, being being who they are they they get persecuted just for liking sex like i'm sure you have also in the past and like they it, it's very frowned upon on social media and conventions and like so i, I think you personally you are you are setting like a, a trend you're setting like a, a standard and a norm for a lot of people to show that like sex can be very positive and can be harmless to those like if if you know you're being positive about it so for that i appreciate you so thank you um thank you and you know, I think it should be normalized. Like people have sex, people, we're sexual beings in, in so many different ways. And, um, you know, just being, I, I recently started an OnlyFans about literally a week ago and it has so far been one of the most rewarding ventures that I've I've been on thus far and people, are so nice and and I feel like there's a stigma that you know if you're if you're paying for sexual exchange um there has to be something inherently wrong or something that's there and it's like no people pay for the things that they like and sometimes Great. the things that they like are sexual in nature and that's fine absolutely fine <laughs> and there shouldn't be any kind of stigma attached to it. And it bothers me when people put it on there. So like, I, I appreciate what you're doing. I, I want it to be normalized. I want people like to not have problems when it comes to that, because like you said, we are sexual creatures and we all come from sex. So there you go. Um, I, I had like a whole list of ideas of questions I wanted to ask you. And we kind of just went completely off track and started talking about other things. I, I feel like that's that's like the best kind of, of things though. But Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed completely. Um, it was going to be kind of a cliche, trivial kind of questions. But what we've been talking about has been a lot more impressive to me. Uh, I think you're an amazing person. I saw your Sin City, um, your Sin City picture. And I know that uh, uh, Dawson sent you some love also because of it and that had to have been something like you had to have felt like some some cool feels when it came to that right the goddess the <laughs> warrior woman so um, now, yeah 
<laughs> um, Rosario Dawson, um, like I said, in, in a few tweets after, she she was one of the only women of color that was doing like action and and like really taking these badass kick-ass roles. Yeah. Like there was Kate Beckinsale and and um there's old Reaver. girl who yeah yeah yes, and then the yeah and then uh rosario dawson just kind of kicked the door in because like she's also in death proof where she yeah. kicks ass yeah. and um so i really wanted to pay homage to this this movie and this comic that i adored as edgelord maki in the early 2000s i loved Sin City, all things like that, Boondock Saints. So yeah. I wanted I wanted to pay homage to this character that I thought was so amazing and represented, you know, sex work and protecting sex workers and and this massive allegory that I thought and you know it probably was something else. Um, but for me, my big takeaway from Sin City and Gale was that you know, you protect sex workers and that you go by sure. all means necessary. They, yeah. have, they have an entire city that cops are afraid to go to. Like an yes. entire city of sex workers that cops do not mess around in. So, yeah. Um, so that was very powerful to me to see her in that role. And so when I was actually sleeping and then I woke up and I saw the tweet blowing up and I saw... <laughs> someone somebody texted me and was like rosario shouted you out girl twice and i was like you lying and so i went <laughs> and i was like i was like oh thank you queen thank you thank you thank you and she responded to me and i was like my soul left my body like it was it was an, it was an amazing like experience yeah uh may studio did a photography for that right yes 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 i collaborate did with him a lot did such a great job like amazing work when it comes to that piece and i was gonna ask you like what was it feel like to have that happen like did you think this was gonna take off uh from what you just said no you did not think it was gonna take off and it did yeah <laughs> you never know twitter twitter is very fickle yes, it and is. you never know you know you could think that you're posting something and it is like the baddest shit you've ever posted and then it doesn't pop and you're just like guess i'll die um and so it's a for, pendulum it can be positive or negative takeoff too yeah yes yeah that so with that i posted it and i was like you know it's gonna do what it does we'll see and then rosario dawson is in my mansions that's so cool that's so cool that's gonna live with you forever i'm sure oh yeah um we talked about a lot i used to ask people any kind of questions they have when it comes to uh uh comic book news like uh, like i know wandavision is coming out you got the falcon winter soldier show coming out you got uh Ra ray fisher got things going on at the uh, dc with the, the racism there is there anything like like that's nerddom that you want to talk about that, that's out there right now um let's see just nerddom in general in general yeah anime video games whatever so i've been on um I've been watching Hunter Hunter and I am about halfway through it. And I am a person who's not into Shonen. My first anime that I like became attached to was Cowboy Bebop. Really? So for me, yes. I took you more of a, of a, <laughs> of a Chobits kind of person, but Cowboy Bebop, I appreciate Oh, I love Chobits. Don't get me wrong. Right on. That's cool. I, I love <laughs> Chobits. Um, but Bebop was the first anime that I fell in love with. Um, it was a theme song, wasn't it? It was, it was the music. Yeah. Just the music in general is like what gripped me and the story, just being able to tell this story in 25 episodes. So like Shonen for me, after that, I was like, Dragon Ball Z? What? Like 100 <laughs> I'm, I'm episodes? <laughs> no. Um, 291, actually, but yeah. <laughs> Too yeah, much. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even for me, like 50 episodes was pushing it. I was like, if you can't tell this in 25 episodes or less, I'm gone. <laughs> so um, so I've been getting into watching anime more in 2020 because of course we were all at home. There was nothing to do. Right. Um, and 
I I had watched a bunch of stuff and Hunter Hunter was one of those things that everyone recommended to me and I was like I'm not gonna watch this I don't know who you think I am <laughs> this is like 200 episodes no and I posted on Twitter as a joke if Biden wins I'll start Hunter Hunter oh you made a <laughs> deal you made a bad deal with this. <laughs> And it was like right as he was like, it was like right as like we kind of like knew it was gonna be called, but we were still like mm. they could still do some fuck shit. But um Biden ended up winning like yeah. a million times. And um times. <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I began my hunter hunter journey, and it is really um that and my hero academia, I think have fundamentally changed how I feel about shonen anime and I never thought that I would be you know Maki Roll 2021 endorsing anime shonen anime at that okay there you go I was about to say your name is Maki Roll you gotta have some anime inside. <laughs> yeah, just a little um, bit <laughs> shonen, shonen anime um and I've never completed um a shonen anime um but you're gonna not- finish this one Oh, oh yes, of course. And and Nyla Rose, AEW Queen, Nyla Rose <laughs> started watching Hunter Hunter because of me. I have to finish it. You gotta have to now, yeah. I need whether to you finish. like it or not. <laughs> oh, right now, the arc that I'm in, everyone has told me, Oh, it's gonna break your heart. It's like here for feels. Oh my god, it's terrible. And me, I'm just like, I'm ready. Are Give you? Me. Um, give me all of it. I want everyone dead at the end. See, you know, I knew you were a badass. Like, and I knew it. I felt it. I felt it in my heart. I knew you were a badass. Like, she doesn't care. Not much faith in her. I can, I can just look at her and see. like, will I cry? <laughs> oh, I will cry for characters. However, at the end, it's like make it count. <laughs> <laughs> Watch shows with you. My goodness, man! I That's, bet you were fond during Game of Thrones. I oh, by the end of Game of by the end of Game of Thrones, I was like what why would you why why this why this but um ramsey ramsey i'm so glad he got his so Woo! glad. So yes glad he got his. but and like some. he was he was so chilling that like by the time that happened you're like oh yes bitch I cannot, I want to watch this. Dude, do not turn the camera away. I, I stood up and clapped. Like I didn't, I didn't do that with Joffrey, but I definitely did that with Ramsey. Most, oh, most definitely. Joffrey, I laughed. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, look at this bitch. That's kid. <laughs> I was like, oh man. But uh, yes, yes. And uh, so that has been kind of like my nerdum realm and also stepping back into gaming with starting my twitch channel i actually celebrated cool headphones on? yes mm. yes yes these are my this is like my my gaming setup and so <laughs> <laughs> so i had been i actually yesterday celebrated my 2020 highlights from my first three months on twitch right on and so that's been very cool to kind of step back into video gaming i feel like i'm really just coming back into my nerd um in a real way like in a way where I'm like appreciating anime and like knowing when like anime is gonna drop and like participating in betas for video games it's like it's like (laughs) it's like all the cool things you did when you were younger is now uh okay for you to do and you feel so much better all that trauma that you got when you were a kid it just yes washed away no and I, I got money too i mean wow like, that sounds like a fun time yeah like <laughs> and i can pay for my hobby wow oh my god there's no there's no no old person breathing down my neck telling me to go do this and that yeah <gasps> right no, i get you man i get you completely <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time uh, Maki, I, I asked this to everybody who's on the show, and I gotta ask you, and I really want to hear what your answer is, is that if you had to tell your your audience, your fans, your followers, uh, I'm not sure what you call the people who love and admire you, but if you had one thing to say to them, what would it be? Hey, my gremlin babies. Um, I just want you all to be safe. Be safe. Um, 
be kind, but take no shit. Um, the world is on fire right now, but take time for yourself. Take time for your loved ones. Um, take time to explore yourself and what creative passions that you might have dormant. Um, 2021 is where the money resides. <laughs> um, and that, yeah, that's it. I love that. I didn't mean to laugh when you said Gremlin Babies. You're just like, you're, you're honestly so cute that I can't help but to laugh. So yeah, <laughs> you just, you say stuff and I like it. Don't ever stop, please. <laughs> uh, well, this, this has been fun. Where can people find you, Maki? Um, I am all the places, but right now I'm mostly on Twitch, www.twitch.tv slash Maki Streams. I am also on Twitter a lot, talking sh- shit uh maki roll ofc instagram maki roll official and if you're into the lewd weird stuff uh, i just started an only fans at maki roll official as well and that's where you can find me right on it's been a pleasure having you on the show uh check out her page please like you will not be disappointed she's <laughs> she's not boring i'll tell you that so yeah <laughs> Maki, thank you for being on the show. This has been a blast. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. You too.